After you've loaded your job or farm information, you are now coming to the main run screen on the Raven Viper 4. This is the current display layout with newest 2016 planting firmware. As you can see, we have a GPS demonstration running to show how it looks going through the field. And we're going to walk through the icons on the outer edges of the display. We can see up here in the upper left hand corner is our VT of our planter information. At any time you can come in here to access that by simply tapping on the box. It will expand out and you have all of your virtual terminal information for the planter. Master on off, all of your population boxes, page information, crop type, etc. are all accessible. Once you're done making changes, so we want to see our bar graph information. We hit our green return arrow, it shrinks it down out of the way, and you now can see your main map and then your bar graph information at the same time. As we work our way around the outer edges of the display, we start over here in the lower left hand corner with the icon with two triangles on it. This icon is used if the planter icon is behind or backwards driving through the field. This can happen upon first power up of the display if you first movement or GPS signal is not in the forward direction of travel you can or it can cause this icon to be backwards. There will be an audible beep when this happens and this icon will then have a yellow exclamation point. If we tap it in this situation it says are you sure you want to reverse the forward direction. If we press yes it will physically flip the icon around we're driving forward, although it shows in the reverse direction, you can hear the audible beep as well as the icon is yellow with the exclamation point. This is perfectly normal and lets you, knowing, lets you know that the Viper thinks that you are not going in the right direction. When this happens, if you simply hit reverse, it will flip you around the correct direction, the beeping will stop and you are ready to go. Again, this is only if there is an error and the alarm is sounding. The next icon is your day-night toggle icon. We can see we have currently the daylight setting is on with the sun. If we tap on that once, it takes us to the nighttime setting. Tap it again, it takes us back. We can change those settings at any time by simply pressing and holding on the icon. Since the sun is the current active icon shown, these are your preferences for the sun setting. If we hit our return arrow, tap on our icon for the nighttime setting, and then press and hold, we then can change our brightness setting. So by tapping on the icon, if we change this to 50, you can see it lightens it up, and those settings stay. Once we hit our return arrow, again by toggling back and forth between day and night. Of course, we talked about our VT window already in the upper left hand corner. Again, active anytime just by tapping on it once. Green return arrow to shrink it down. The very top of the screen, we have a manual switch box. This allows you to shut off sections on the planner manually as you are going through the field. The first button, which looks like a power button, is the master switch. This icon controls all of them after it. For example, if we tap on the box and hit the red circle to shut everything off, you can see all the sections change to the red circle, which means nothing is planting, all of the rows are off. We tap on it again, we change it to the green eye icon. This says that everything is planting all the time and section control is not active. If we change it back, to Accu, which is for auto swath, Accu boom. This goes back to the recommended state of auto swath control all the time. So this will allow it to shut off as you're coming into a previously planted area or pre-made boundaries. You can do single sections by simply tapping on the icon and hitting zero. 
This will just shut off the rows assigned to section one. We turn it back to ACU and we're back to the auto swath setting. You can do that for any of the sections on the top of the page. Again, this is for manual control, so you have six sections of manual does not indicate that there are only six sections of control on the planner. Depending on planner size, the number of controlling sections varies depending on options and number of rows. As we look at the top, we of course have our applied acres, or the acres covered, our speed, and then we have our product box. Depending on how you set up the product configuration as talked about in earlier videos, those names would show up here accordingly. Right now we're just using generic names of PO1, which would be for our seed, PO2, which would be for our fertilizer, and then PO3, which would be for our insecticide. This planter is equipped with all three options, so we have all three labeled in our product box. If you do not have one of those or both of those options on your machine, if you just have seed, you would only use one or have one displayed here. The first column under the target is your set rate, whether it be for population, fertilizer, or insecticide. The next column, the one to the right, is actual applied rates. So this is what you want it to put on. This is what you are putting on over here. If you press and hold on this, similar to the other ones, you can change the rates by tapping on the box and change the planting rates at any time. You can see this currently isn't active right now. We're not physically planting, so it's not allowing us to check or change, and we can see that by the off indicators here. As you're driving through the field and the master switch is on, these would all be in the on section, and then you can change your presets here. Hit our return arrow to go back. Directly below that is our manual bump button down here. So you can see that there's an asterisk next to the PO1. Now it's on PO2 and now it's on PO3. What this allows you to do if you select the product and you want to manually bump that value, you simply press on the up or down values down here to change it on the go. If you press and hold on this icon, it allows you to set that bump value. So currently this one is set to 1,000 seeds per acre bump value every time we press the up and down arrows. These boxes for changing rate and changing rate with these icons over here allow you to change the seeding rate without having to go into the VT box on this display. However, these are only active and able to change the values if you are on your VT window and all of your products are set to RX. This does not mean you need to use prescription maps. It simply gives control of the rates to the Viper 4 display. This has to be done for all of the products that you are applying. So prescription for fertilizer and prescription for insecticide. Once those are set to prescription, it now gives you control to change your rates with these two icons. Again, these will be on and active when you are actually planting through the field and your master switch is on on the VT window. The next icon down right here is your auto swath button. If you press and hold on that icon, <clears throat> There are a couple things that are automated to be checked. For example, apply to all products. And then enable AccuBoom ensures that auto swath control is on and active. To shut it off, you simply tap on it and auto swath is no longer active. Meaning as soon as the planter is down, as you're driving through the field, it will not shut off as you come into a previously planted area. Down below, we have our look ahead times, our turn off look ahead, and turn on look ahead for helping set our clutch control. These are the preset values of 0.4 and 1.4. Would not recommend changing those until you are in the field and validating with in-field checks, and then adjust your look ahead times one-tenth at a time to dial 
those section controls in. So we're going to turn our enable AccuBoom on. Again, change your values one tenth at a time after you've verified field performance. We hit our red X to get out of here. The next icon down, which looks like a tire icon, is our jump start button. The main feature of the jump start button is to reduce the startup gas when you're starting from a dead stop. For example, you back into the corner to start your field. If you simply set the planter down and start driving, by the time you start moving to where the first seed is in the ground, you can have a two to three foot startup gap before the first seed is there. The jump start button on the Viper 4 allows you a preset time for jump start to be active. So you back into the corner, you set the planter down, or you're in the middle of the field and you've stopped to pick something up and you want to start again. In order to reduce the startup gap before you start moving, simply tap on the box, start driving, and the drive will start to turn. The drive will turn until the timer runs out or GPS speed is sensed by the display. So if you press the button and no longer move, the drive is going to continue to run until that timer runs out or again you start moving. So right before you're ready to go, press the jump start, start the tractor moving. As soon as GPS speed is sensed, this is no longer active even though the number may still be counting down. You can set that value to whatever you so choose by pressing hold of that icon and you can set it to a maximum of 30 seconds. So now if we tap on that box, it starts counting down from 30 seconds. Jump start is active, again as you are sitting still, so a zero speed. It will continue to be active until that number goes to zero or the display senses a GPS speed. One important note with the jump start icon is the simulated speed that that function uses for the planner is whatever manual speed is entered in on the VT window. To validate what speed <clears throat> your planner is going to be using, if you go into your VT window, you go to planter menu, you go to settings, and you go to speed. The very bottom is manual ground speed value. Okay. This default value is two miles an hour. You can set that value to whatever you so choose. Just remember two miles an hour is the factory setting and it seemed to be the best middle ground for jump start operation. Make sure there's a value in there Otherwise, jump start will not be used. If it is a high value, for example, five miles an hour from a test or a stationary run operation, if this is at five miles an hour, when you press your jump start button, the drives will simulate five miles an hour operation. It's recommended to have a two mile an hour value as shown here. If we back out and get back to our run page, we can then shrink our VT window down. The last icon on this screen is our markers icon. This allows you to control the markers without going into the virtual terminal. By just simply tapping on the box on the right for our right hand marker, just the right hand marker will be active. We select the left, just the left hand marker will be active. The center icon allows for auto mode. So if we tap on auto, it now becomes automatic, but the left hand one is currently active or on. When you get to the other side of the field, you raise the marker up and you raise the planter. As soon as you raise the planter, it will automatically switch to the right hand marker being active. And now the right hand marker will go down when you operate the right hand remote. This is automatic at any time. You can tap on the box in the center to shut it off. You can tap on the box that is currently active to completely shut off the markers. This view is one of the default views of the Viper 4. At the bottom center of the screen there is a display icon. If you tap on the display icon you have other boxes. 
The one with the globe on it will not be used. Your other two options, just to the right, so the one right here takes you back to this screen where we were. We hit the one just to the right of that. It takes you to the overhead view, so an airplane looking down. Similar layout, a little less clutter. There's no switch box on this page, but very familiar icons on this screen. We tap this one. We go to the one that looks blank, and we tap on it. It comes to this page, which they've called the widget view. This gives you a larger virtual terminal box, a larger bar graph at the bottom, and then a smaller map. All of your icons from the previous page are still on this screen, but it just gives you a better overall view of the virtual terminal. You can change to any one of these screens at any time just by, again, simply tapping on the screen, tapping on your other view, and we get back to where we started. Those views, again, are done anytime, even as you're moving through the field. That's the summary of the icons on this screen. Once you're finished planting your field, we then can go to our house icon, and we then get our stop button here, which allows us to stop or close the job. Once we do that and press stop, we come back to our job profile tab, and again, depending on how you label them, you have all of your jobs here. You can certainly go back into the job by just tapping on the previous job you've been in. It gives you information from your last setting. If we hit the play button, it will reload the same job and start right where you've left off. We hit our house to stop the job. We hit stop. It takes us back to job profile. Or back to our general settings and job profile tab. Thank you.